This is what 100 marbles look like when they're arranged into a basic image. It's a smiley face, okay? And obviously on a 10 by 10 pixel grid, you don't have a lot of resolution to work with, but I love the way these images look. So I'm thinking a 32 by 32 pixel grid would give me plenty of resolution to work with, but there's absolutely no way I'm gonna arrange those manually, which is why I'm going to engineer. I'm already losing my marbles. I'm going to engineer and build the machine to do it for me. How hard could it be? All I'm gonna need is thousands of marbles. Let's go with eight different colors. I'm gonna need a big screen for the marbles. I need a way to lift the marbles up to the top of the machine. I need a way to automatically distribute the exact colors and the exact quantities into the screen. A way to automatically dump marbles out of the bottom. And finally, I need a way to sort the marbles into their distinctive colors so the whole process can be repeated over and over. Okay, yeah, sounds like it's actually gonna be kind of hard. But there's no turning back now because I've already acquired over 7,000 marbles. So I guess first things first, let's just figure out how to automatically sort these marbles and we'll go from there. It all starts with this color sensor, which spits out an RBG value depending on what color it sees. I have to first code in the color values for each marble color. Then when any pre-programmed marble color comes into the sensor's view, I could use something called Euclidean color distance, which is basically just math for what color is it. And it spits out the current marble's color. Now that I have a way to detect colors, let's figure out how to do the sorting. So I settled on this design where the sorting paddles are connected directly to the DC motors. This wheel lifts the marbles one by one, pausing momentarily to give the sensors a chance to read the color. Then the ball drops down and the paddles move just in time to direct the balls into the right lanes. Quick side note, I did test the idea of trying to detect the color as the ball runs past the sensor, but it wasn't very accurate. As you can see, this prototype actually works pretty well, but I wasn't quite satisfied. As I sped up the lift wheel, the pausing would cause the balls to wiggle, which would then throw off the sensor readings. On top of that, because the wheel is currently driven by a stepper motor without any feedback, if the wheel loses its indexing, the entire machine stops working. I could add some feedback, maybe a magnet and a Hall effect sensor, but instead I decided to switch to this concept where the ball drops in front of the sensor. This way I can be sure that the ball is in the exact right spot every time, and we can worry about the lifting mechanism later. Now I can control the release of the marble using this solenoid, which ejects the ball into the sorting mechanism and allows the next marble to drop in. And speaking of sorting mechanisms, this current design uses three motors to sort the four different colors that I have here. If I wanna sort the eight colors that I have planned, I would need seven motors and seven of these controllers to be able to control the motors backwards and forwards. And then on top of that, I'm planning to have two of these sorting systems. So I would actually need 14 motors and 14 controllers. And if you're asking me, this mechanical engineer over here, that sounds like a huge nightmare of wiring and control and electronics, which I would love to avoid, which is why I'm going to test a version of this that uses a single servo motor that requires only a single wire to control. At first, I dismissed the servo driven design because I didn't think that it would be fast enough. But on second thought, if I gear the servo even just by two to one, it would be a lot faster. And as you can see, it works pretty well. And with its capability to handle two balls per second, which means that it could sort its entire 512 balls in under five minutes, I would say that it's more than fast enough. The fact that this thing works has just saved me so much time and money even with electronics, but you might be wondering, can't this just be used to put the marbles into the grid in the first place? You would just take the marbles that dump out of the grid, pipe them up to the top, and as you're detecting the colors, you could just drop them into the grid in whatever pattern you'd like. The main goal is to actually make this thing look as cool as possible. If it's just doing this for 1,024 marbles, I feel like this will get a little bit boring to watch. But if there's two things going on at the same time, it creates a more visual experience watching this machine in action. So with that being said, let's keep going. And next up, the balls are gonna need a bin to land in once they've been sorted. But this isn't gonna be just any regular bin. The bins are also gonna be responsible for pumping the balls up to the top of the frame and then dropping them in exact quantities as needed. My first concept is a paddle wheel that would hopefully work to simultaneously prevent balls from jamming while also distributing them. As you can see, the balls have a tendency to jam in the paddle wheel like this, or if they're not jamming, they're just stacking up like this. So I thought about adding an agitator to prevent the balls from doing that, but I had a nagging thought that there was a much better way. The Archimedes screw has entered the chat. I was trying to avoid this concept because honestly, I wasn't exactly sure how to conceptualize an auger based hopper system. But hacking a bit of cardboard together as a test, I was then able to quickly develop this concept. As the screw turns, a ball falls into this channel. The screw moves the ball forward, allowing it to escape through the hole in the back of the bin. And at the same time, when multiple balls try to enter the channel in the same thread, it pushes the upper ball up, acting as a built-in agitator. You can see when the entire thing is full, we never have the problem of the balls packing into each other. 
It can reliably fully empty itself without any jamming. To pump the marbles up to the top, each ball that exits the hopper will push the previous one up through a routing tube. This switch will provide some feedback telling the motor to turn off when the exact right amount of balls have been dispensed. There are so many ways that I could have done this, including ways that didn't require pushing an entire column of marbles up just to distribute a single marble. But Designer J really liked the idea of having the balls traveling up on either side of the frame showcasing their vibrant colors in this beautiful symmetrical display. And honestly, Engineer Jay kind of agreed. And speaking of ways to lift marbles, there's one more thing that we need to add to finish the sorting loop here. When the balls drop out of the back of the frame over here, they're gonna travel down this ramp and then they're gonna need a way to get from the bottom of the ramp to the top of the sorting unit here. I briefly explored the use of a much larger Archimedes screw oriented vertically with the plan to lift lots of marbles at the same time. It's quite obvious after the fact, but as you can see, instead of moving up, the balls just drop down the screw. To get the screw to work, you need to orient it on an angle, which allows the balls to pull and rise up to the top. I really didn't like the way this was going to look in the final design, so I decided to go with a completely different concept. But first, quick side quest. I added a catcher and a tube to the screw, creating this fun but completely pointless little ball machine. It's also prone to losing marbles, which is a metaphor for how I'm feeling at this point in the project. Okay, back to the other concept, which may look like your regular run-of-the-mill marble lift, but there's something sneaky about this that I spent a lot of time working on, probably more time than I should have. Most conveyor lifts like this would normally drop the marbles onto the other side of the lift, similar to the one that I used in my gravity well video. This one, on the other hand, has a sprocket mount with a coaxial hole running through it. When marbles get to the top of the lift, they fall through the chain segments into this catcher and they roll out through the center of the sprocket. And with this, I think I have everything I need to move on to the hardest part of this entire project and that is incorporating all of these different subcomponents into one massive fully functional machine. This is gonna take about four weeks of hardcore computer design work, super boring. So while I'm doing that, let me tell you about the company that made this entire project possible and may make your life as an engineer so much easier. Avnet. Picture this, you're an engineer and you just designed this crazy novel marble hopper dispenser system. It's got this motor on it, it's got a feedback switch. Now it's time to turn this prototype into a full scale product. But there are still some unanswered questions like how are you gonna power this thing? And what microcontroller are you gonna use to control everything? Well, Avnet has a team of technical experts that can help you make all of these design decisions for your product. On top of that, they also have a massive catalog of semiconductors, interconnect, passive, electromechanical, and power components. They also have an extensive network of over 2000 electronics manufacturers that can get you everything that you need exactly when and where you need it. Obviously, this entire Marble Pixels project is not exactly a real world engineering project, but all the engineering and component selection decisions that I'm making can be 100% applied to any real world engineering project. And I can assure you that if I was trying to mass produce this, it'd be really nice to have an expert helping me with that. So if you have a product and you're ready to elevate it, Avnet can help. And I put a couple links in the description below to give you a little bit more information on how they can help you in your product roadmap. Thanks so much, Avnet, for helping make this project possible. And with that, everything is ready to go. So let's go grab the parts off the printer and start putting this thing together. First up are the hoppers. And I made them a bit longer, but more narrow than the first prototype. Then I combined four of them into one that can be printed as a single piece. The screws slide in from the front. The coupler for the motor coupler attaches onto the back. The motor coupler attaches to that. Then the motor slides in and screws onto the back. Now we just have to repeat that seven more times. Lastly, we just need a laser cut top plate, a laser cut front plate, and then we gotta repeat this whole thing one more time for the other side, but now the hopper system is ready to go. Oh my God, I should have known when I ordered 7,000 marbles that this was gonna get intense. Whew. Next up is the screen which I had to split into four parts so it could fit on my printers. The frame also had to get split up into four different parts. This time I had to print them on my Prusa XL because the parts are super big and they have these channels built into them so the marbles can dump out the bottom as well as be dropped into the top with the distribution system. A little bit of a scary moment, because this is the first time that I'll ever be seeing this frame fully built. All right, let's just do it. Will the marble make it through? 
<laughs> the answer is absolutely not, which is not good. I was a little bit worried about this happening because the tolerances are so tight in there. It's literally off by a half a millimeter. This is gonna be a future Jay's problem. We'll figure it out later. Hi, future Jay here. And after reprinting all of these frame pieces with slightly different dimensions, I realized that all I had to do was just clip the top of the channels off. And that way the balls don't get stuck going between the frame and the channel. And now, as you can see, there's no problems dropping balls into the frame. Let's keep going. The frame attaches to these aluminum extrusions on top of the hoppers and has these supports at the back to keep everything secure. Laser cut parts, 3D printed parts, hand cut parts, all coming together. Yes! <laughs> this system made up of four rack and pinions connected to a central shaft, slots into the back of the channels and will automatically control the emptying of the machine. The lift conveyors connect onto the top of the extrusions and sit here and here. The sorting units slide perfectly into the front of the frame, just like this and like this. And now we can connect the distribution system to the top of the machine, which we'll talk more about in a second because it's actually sick. But first, let's finish things off by adding the routing pipes that will direct the balls out of the hopper and up to the top of the machine, and the tube switch system which will take the balls from the routing pipes and drop them into the distributor. The distribution system is probably my favorite part of the machine. Inspired by an IDEX 3D printer, it has two sliders, each controlled by its own stepper motor. These are constant force springs, often found in clock wind-up mechanisms. They attach to the slider and then to these two posts. As the slider moves, the springs create a self-adjusting funnel that directs the ball from this stationary ball spout into whichever column is currently selected. So I went to do the first official drop test on this sliding ramp system, fully expecting that this was gonna work. And when I drop the marble in, as you can see, it gets stuck. What the heck? I looked back at the CAD and it looks like the problem actually is the sliders that I got are a slightly thicker dimension than the sliders that I designed for. And so as a result, everything is like one millimeter nudged forward a little bit. And so as you can see, if I push this back, the marble drops. That is so frustrating because the, it's such a simple fix, but the only way to fix it is to take this entire thing apart. Oh my God, this is the cursed build. On a project like this, if it seems like everything is always going smoothly, that's mainly just for the sake of keeping the video moving. But generally speaking, I had to take apart and put back this machine together on so many different occasions. And that's what comes with the territory of trying to design and build a complex machine like this for the first time. But eventually after assembling and disassembling and fixing, you run out of problems that you have to solve, which means that the project is actually ready to go. Motors are hooked up. Wiring is done, so it's time to finally see if these hoppers can pump marbles all the way up to the top. And I don't know why I haven't tested this before, so I guess we're gonna test it now for the first time. Let's load up this hopper right here with some marbles and see if we can pump them up to the top. There's literally not a single operation you could do with these where you don't lose at least some marbles. And that's not even a losing my marbles joke. It's just the truth. It is officially confirmed that we can pump marbles from the hoppers up to the top of the machine. So the last thing to do is to get all the different modules working together in order to create pictures with marbles. In a nutshell, I have five ESP32 microcontrollers controlling each of the hopper systems and the sorting systems and the slider system. And then here's the master system, which speaks to all of these modules individually, converting an image into all of these mechanical motions in order to make pictures with marbles. Finally, it's time to fill this machine up with 7,000 marbles and make some pictures. Let's do it. I'm gonna hit send on a full image. This is just a test image. Oh my God, I'm honestly so nervous. There's so many things that have to go right for this to work. Let's just do it, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Honestly, I think there, this is, mostly a code problem. I know how to sort that out. I'm gonna go throw some finishing touches on this and then we're gonna make some really sick pixel art with marbles.
I'm absolutely shocked to see this machine running so well because this has been the hardest project that I've done to date. I'm not gonna lie, engineering is hard, but the feeling you get after you battle through a project and you see it actually working in real life, so worth it. Thank you so much for watching these videos and supporting my channel and for letting me pick projects that kick my butt. Thank you Abnet for sponsoring this video. And as always, there's a lot more where this came from. So I'll see you in the next video.